As an occupational therapist, I've had scores of clients referred to me for carpal tunnel. Um, and most providers, uh, physicians, and, and even a lot of OTs really only do the, the Phelan's test for carpal tunnel uh, and for median nerve or the tunnels at the wrist just for median nerve. And so at best, you're just going to rule in or out uh, median nerve symptoms. So what I'm going to do is, is show you how to survey for median, radial, and ulnar nerve distributions in the hand and arm. So I'm going to survey for median, ulnar, and radial nerve symptoms in the forearm uh, and hand. Uh, first I'm going to do my palpation of the nerve distributions and then I'll do my tenels. And so typically you would look for um, achy pain from the palpation or numbness and, or tingling from the um, tenels, but I would accept either. So whether you're doing palpation or tenels, if the client complains of achy pain, uh, electric jolt symptoms, uh, numbness, tingling, any of those, I would consider that positive test. So I'm going to just walk my fingers down the muscle mass here on the medial side of the forearm for ulnar nerve. And then here to the middle and lateral side for median nerve. And then here on the dorsolateral muscle mass for radial nerve. And then I'm going to palpate the medial um, triceps here for ulnar nerve. Um, okay, then I'm going to do my tenels and I'm going to start at the wrist and work my way up. If you start proximally and you provoke the symptoms, sometimes the clients cannot return to baseline and then at that point your exam is basically over. So I would always start at the wrist and then I would do my tenels usually about an inch above and below the wrist crease. So this would be ulnar nerve and then here for median nerve. and then over the snuff box area for the sensory branch of the radial nerve. Also, probably uh, more helpful for the sensory branch of the radial nerve is just going to palpate very firmly over the first and second metacarpal. And clients would not necessarily have complained of achy pain to this area, but when you palpate, they might find uh, the pain really pretty, pretty remarkable. Okay. Then I'm going to go up the forearm and I'm going to do my tenels for ulnar nerve all the way down the medial forearm. That ulnar nerve runs right up under the flexor carpi ulnaris all the way down the forearm. And then for median nerve here in the forearm, if you kind of wiggle the hand back and forth a little bit, you can kind of feel the drop off between muscles. And so that little spot right about there, you're going to do your tenels for median nerve. And then for radial nerve, and I'll show this on the other arm so you can see it better, but you can look for your lateral epicondyle and kind of come forward diagonally about an inch and a half, and you're going to press right about there where the radial nerve pierces the supinator. Then I'm going to um, just put a little light pressure here, uh, the cubital tunnel for ulnar nerve, and then I can do my tenels here for ulnar nerve. And I'll show radial nerve again over here so that you can see it. Okay. So I would do my tenels right over the snuff box area and then palpate along the first metacarpal and second metacarpal really firmly. And then my palpation here for the radial nerve as it pierces the supinator. Here is my lateral condyle. I'm going to kind of come forward uh, and down about an inch and a half or two inches and press right here. So that would be for your distal nerve distributions, your radial, median, and ulnar nerve uh, for hand and forearm. So what happens if you do this distal exam and you find that the client is provocative for radial, ulnar, and median nerves at the wrist and potentially wrist, forearm, and elbow? Uh, it doesn't make sense that that client has a distal nerve entrapment in a half a dozen different places, potentially on both arms. And so what's usually going on here is that they have um, kind of like a thoracic outlet syndrome, but usually just from posture and position. So the good news is that it's, you know, we can do something about that. Um, and so the next thing that I would do for these clients would be the ruse test. And then I would probably do some palpation of the neck, upper back muscles for um, potential trigger point and referred pain from there. 
For my raise, I would be standing uh, directly in front of my client, and what we're going to do is have them bring their arms up so that their uh, upper arms are uh, parallel to the floor, their elbows are at about a 90 degree angle, and then make sure that the head, that they're looking straight ahead. If they've got their head turned either way, because a lot of patients will like look at the arm that hurts them the most, then you're biasing the test. So you want them to look straight ahead, and then you're just going to have them slowly um, open and close the hands. They don't have to make a tight fist, uh, and, and certainly I wouldn't pump this really fast like a lot of clients do. Just slowly open and close the hands. And uh, some sources would say you can go as long as about three minutes with this test. Now anyone's arms are going to feel heavy and tired at three minutes, but some clients will feel the heaviness and tiredness uh, immediately. But you're, you're asking, you know, it, first I would start out just asking, do you feel any changes either arm? Um, you know, either arm or hand, you know, achy pain, sharp pain, numbness, tingling, any of those. And then after they go on for a while, then I would, um, I usually do ask them specifically if their arms feel tired or heavy. And clients will classically tell me, well, yes, but that's because I'm really out of shape. And then I will ask them if one arm perhaps feels more heavy and more tired than the other. And they might say, yes, my right arm or my, you know, my dominant side. And then I would point out to them that uh, it really doesn't make sense that, that one arm would be more out of shape than the other and that this really is what I'm looking for. So that would be a vascular symptom, this um, sensation of heaviness or tiredness um, in one or both arms or any part of them. And so that would be an indicator that indeed that they're getting some, um, some compression of their neurovascular bundle um, and uh, as I say, a lot of times that's just from posture and position, and so that's where our ergonomics teaching comes in. So the final thing that I want to do here is uh, some palpation of neck, upper, back muscles. So a lot of my clients uh, would come in for referrals for carpal tunnel or to queer veins, tennis elbows, some of these things. And the pain actually originates in some of these neck, upper, back muscles. So what I found, probably the, the most um, prevalent thing finding I've had is that referred pain from uh, trigger points in the levator will refer in a pattern consistent with the skin dermatomes. And so you're going to have um, pain down this way, so you're going to get a tennis elbow consult um, and potentially uh, de Quare veins consult. So I would come up here and, and palpate, find the vertebral border of the scapula and then the scapular spine. And so right here at the root of the scapula, this area up here, the superior portion, um, that's where your levator is going to attach and run up towards the base of your skull here. So you might feel generalized tightness throughout the upper traps, but oftentimes you're going to feel that band of levator that's going to be even, even tighter. And sometimes you can just palpate and press directly on that levator, and that pain will refer all the way down to their elbow or to their, to their thumb. So that's one. Then also um, the rhomboids. A lot of times um, some, some um, triggers in the rhomboids, they'll feel like a subscapular pain where they might report that their entire chest wall is achy or it feels like the pain is up under their shoulder blade where they can't get to it. Uh, occasionally I might see some um, ulnar nerve symptoms, but usually it's going to be uh, symptoms consistent with tennis elbow or to queer veins or that um, subscapular pain. So then um, you can do some, some strategies, some soft tissue strategies, some trigger point release, some of those things. I have a video on that too that you could access from my channel.